Okay, it's live. All right, hey everybody, welcome to today's dev talk on adding a configuration setting to Mattermost. Kind of be a bit more of a tutorial compared to my previous presentations. Um, so yeah, I don't know why that line's there. I think that's still Hangouts, yeah. Um, yep. So this will I'll be kind of walking you today through the steps of adding a new setting. You know, it'll be adding it to the actual like config on the server itself. Then you'll have to add it to the system console, um, so that you're able to change it without going and editing the JSON files manually. And then it'll actually be just quickly how to ac access the config when you're on the client or on the server, or on the React Native app, I might, I believe. Uh, so yeah, it, data setting is pretty straightforward. You add it to the config. You add it to the struct that kind of represents the config, and I'll demonstrate this in a second. You set a default for it, you add some validation, and you add unit tests if necessary. So some of the settings may be like, for example, like the session length setting, you can't set a session length less than one day, I believe. So you want those are unit tests. So I'll go over here. I've kind of done this already just to save some typing time, but save. So you'll want to find where in the config your setting can go. Um, generally, we try to find like, the best fit if there's an existing thing, like for example, for adding some new setting for say like the database timeouts in the connection string, but say we wanted our own setup or setting for it, it would just go under the SQL settings. But sometimes also if you're just doing something kind of new, like we had recently um, say some settings added for like compliance, they got their own category because there's enough of them. Um, so in this case, for example, I'm just going to add another setting. I'm going to add it to a new category to kind of show you, because that's a bit more work than adding it regularly. Uh, zoom in a bit, and it, just add this test settings, and it'll just be a value, and it'll just be a string. So let me back up to the top of this file. Um, go down here. So in the this is model slash config dot go. It has a bunch of structs defining each like category of setting. And then it has down at the bottom of them a struct that just includes all of them. So again, it 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 follows the structure of the config.json file. So to add in our new test settings, we just add in the category into the config struct. And for that struct, right now we just have one field value, which again matches what we'd find. And we're gonna use a pointer for it. The main reason some of the older settings we don't have pointers for, but defaulting using pointers now because it allows us to determine that when a setting just hasn't been set by the user versus when it's false. Because for example, like for the data retention settings, if that's set to, if they're just enable Boolean, if they haven't set it, it'll be false. And maybe we want the default to be true on that one if they haven't set it. Um, so we'll go down to the uh, set defaults function. So yeah, there's just on the config struct, there's a function just set defaults. It goes through all the settings and sets defaults for them. That's pretty straightforward. And here, this is where we use the fact that it's a pointer. We check if it is test settings value nil. If so, we make a string and we just give it some default value, in this case, one, two, three, four. Um, yep, yeah, and th this is very important for people that upgrade from a previous version. Because like anyone who deploys this new version of Mattermost just as a fresh installation, we'll have this the config.json file that we've included with it. If they're upgrading from an old version, they probably won't be using the new config.json, so we need some sort of sensible default because they just won't have that setting in their config file at all. Uh, next up, you want to if you need any sort of validation on the setting, like for example, some of these are again you don't want or you want more than uh, one login attempt allowed, or the site URL has to actually be something. Um, so you just add in just a simple if statement checking. We don't, I said that we don't want this one empty. And it just returns some sort of error. Uh, you'll need to define this string like you do with other localization strings. Um, I'm not going to really go into that, though, at this moment. Um, so yeah, once that's all done, if you restart your server, you'll just it'll load up the setting automatically. It'll have everything you need for that. And so you can get to the kind of the next step, which is 
no, no, just change the pictures there. So yeah, the next step is actually adding it to the system console. This may change slightly, especially because we're in the process of uh, changing the web app to Redux. So some of these pages might change, or but the general method, like the general idea, will still be the same. You might create a page in the system console if you need one, um, which we're going to do. And then it's easy enough just, if, uh, uh, th this will make more sense in a second, but you basically put it, or you'd save the setting from the config into the component state, just so you can have a text box or whatever that'll match that. And then you render it using, there's a bunch of setting components like Boolean setting, text setting, generated setting, et cetera, that we kind of use standard that you just use the component and throw help text into, and it'll automatically render nicely and look exactly the same as everything else in System Console. So we'll come back here. And so for adding a, th this is kind of, if, if you've ever added any roots or anything to our app, this will be kind of straightforward. I'll just go over it because it's good to know here. So you're adding a new page for, it's kind of a quick summary of our React router stuff. We have, or for every part of the app, we just have this series of uh, route structures that kind of define all the pages. So here we'd have like, th this top route is should be admin console. Um, and like admin console slash system analytics, the page admin console slash general is a page. So in this case, we just import a, the component we're gonna be making in a second to represent the page, the test settings. And I'll just drop it down here in, under advanced, so it'll be admin console slash advanced slash test, and it'll use that component. Um, we also need to throw it into the sidebar, which again is pretty, it's, it's the same sort of thing, it's structured very nicely. In the, you have categories in the sidebar, in this case it is the advanced category, or sorry, it's the settings category, and then the advanced section, and then the test section underneath of it. Uh, again, you need to localize it, but that's again, outside the scope of this. So now you've you you've added the route here and this is a bit backwards, but then we're gonna actually create the page. Um, all the all the kind of settings pages in the system console inherit from this admin settings. Again, this might change because apparently inheritance kind of does not work with Redux. Um, but that kind of does the general setup of you have the header, you have the sidebar, you have all that nice stuff. So um, you mostly just copy this. I copied this from one of the other pages, and I just kind of changed the... There's basically a couple abstract functions that you implement, and then um, it'll work. So the functions here, you have one that converts the... Th this is the raw config pass from the server with minus some sanitization. Um, you just map it to... Or, oh, sorry, I had that backwards. Yeah, so the raw con config, and then for config function, you just set the... Uh, state of the component to it. So in this case, we're just copying the value out. Um, and th sometimes like the categories don't necessarily one-to-one -one map to, uh, so I can go to uh, customize it. And a custom brand settings, for example. Um, like these categories do map one-to-one, -one, but yes, yeah, so it is kind of a bit more visible example. You can see we are getting multiple settings out of here and saving them into the state. Um, and we have another function that kind of goes backwards. It goes from the state to the config, which will it'll be used while saving. Um, go back to this one. You see here we're again just mapping the state to that value. Uh, title that's straightforward, and then we have the actual like meat of this. So we'll just use this settings group components. Kind of, it's just kind of a wrapper for the contents of these pages. Um, I think it just has the header, if I remember correctly. And then we have, so th this is the example of the text setting component. So it's pretty, you just pass in like, this will be the name of the field, just kind of for some convenience sake. So if this were something other than value, um, I always want those two to be exactly the same. Um, label, so just placeholder in the background of the text box, some help text, um, the actual value, because you're going to, again, you're mapping the, value from the state onto the component, and then when the component changes, it calls handle change, which is from the, uh, which is just inherited, which will then go back and update the state. Yeah, I'll show you kind of 
Let's look. So we have the system console here. Install same as it does normally. And you go back in. You've got your new test route. You got just a text box here. The wrong label there. Whatever. Um, oh yeah, I still call it application ID. Gravel tap. Um, okay. And so yeah, you can go in. You can change the setting and do whatever, and it'll save back to the to the config on the server. Okay, so now you've done all the kind of boring configuration stuff, and now you'll want to actually use the thing, because that's kind of the point of having config. So using it on the server is really easily is really easy. There's just in the utils package, there's just a CFG singleton. And unless you're doing something before that's set up or in some really weird place, it should just be configured mapped. Or want it to uh I'll load it up and everything for it. So you can see, um, here we go. I just added in the test settings dot value line, or the test settings dot value here. So just when you start the server, it'll just print it out. Again, you have to make sure to dereference the pointer, or dereference or follow, or whatever the term is for that. Um, so you can use it, but that's super easy. Um, and yeah, now so using it in the web app, it's Kind of a similar sort of thing, except the web app has the what we call the client config, which is just a um, kind of sanitized and it's a briefer version of the config itself. Because obviously, you don't want to be sending like database connection strings and SMTP credentials and stuff to the client because that'd be really silly. Um, so to be able to use it on the client, you need to add it to this function get client config in utils.go or slash config.go, and then it'll automatically be passed down to the page when it's loaded. Then it'll be accessible from this global variable, mmconfig. Um, you can see an example here of like on the sign up page, how it's using the different settings to tell what buttons and stuff to throw into the sign up page. Um, so we can see here, I can just show you, I just did something slightly different for this one. Just instead of the sign in button saying just sign in, it'll say sign in with and the value. So if we go back to here, we're and log out. We'll see there. It's the value I just entered in one to four, one to three, as that test setting. Um, I don't actually have a full demo of this, but it's very similar in the or in the uh, mobile app. Th this will probably be more like what it'll look like in the web app once we've got Redux um, implemented. But basically, it's just in the Redux store under state dot entities dot general dot config, and then it'll just being, you'll map it in the map state to props function that you're passing to connect when you're making your container, and your actual component will just get it out of the props, and it'll again, it, it, you'll still have to add the setting to the get client config. Um, just it's passed down the exact same way here, and then it'll just be accessible anywhere that you just hook up to the Redux store. So yeah, kind of quick summary. Uh, when you're adding a new setting, you just want to add the new. Uh, value to the model setting struct, as well as like the validation and um, defaults. You want to add it to the system console. That's something we don't. We have a few settings right now that aren't in the system console, but we're trying to make it so everything is. So just, you'll need to do that if you're ever needing data setting. Um, and then you'll probably want to. And then if it's needed in the UI, you want to add it to the client config. So it's that utils.get client config function. And then using the setting on the server is just utils.cfg. The client is just global.mmconfig. And I forgot about the uh, mobile app one here, but it's just using the Redux store. So yeah, hopefully this tutorial is helpful. And if you're ever needing to work around with uh, the settings in, the, or in any of the apps, um, yep, it should be useful. And yeah, so if you're wanting to help out with Mattermost or anything, you can join the developers and contributors channel on our pre-release server. And we're also all on that. So if you ever run into any problems and need help, then you can just post in one of those. So yeah, thanks very much.